Welcome to the Public Voice Salon. We are an open dialogue on education, the arts, and social change. I think we're the only show on TV that actually combines those three categories, education, art, and social change, because they do kind of mix together and uh, over overlap and intersect. And we're very excited to be filming in Hoboken, New Jersey today, which is Claudia and I, this is our hometown here, and to be filming our neighbor, Hiba, uh, Hiba Tresori, who has a frame shop. Uh, also, it serves as an art gallery at times, and she has lots of events, social events here. And it's always a very community-friendly space. We like to champion community. We like to champion small businesses as well. And uh, Hoboken has a very vibrant sidewalk culture. Uh, it was voted one of the top 10 sidewalks in the country in the country actually so this is a good place to be on a day when it was rainy and now the skies cleared and it has that sort of magical feeling after after the rain and and being a magical feeling I think that's a good way to start with Heba because her art brings magic and the window always has beautiful paintings in it to walk by and cheer cheer you up and see the beauty of the art that she brings to the world and we're going to learn a little something uh, from Heba about the art of framing as well which is also a very uh, much a craft as well as an art in itself. So Heba, welcome to the Public Voice Salon. Thank you. Uh, Thank such you. a pleasure to have you on. We want to do this for a long, long time. Well, you're finally. here now, yes. finally. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my, about myself. And I your don't know artwork. Where to began, you know, like I have, um, geez, I don't even know, like I'm blanking out. Okay. Um, we moved here like almost 24 years ago and uh, I wanted to be in the art industry regardless, you know, because uh, art is something that's so special to me. And at the time I felt like that in Hoboken we needed that art culture. And uh, it's not just an art culture only, you know, we also needed someone who understood art in a deeper way. Uh, and framing is kind of like extension of the art and of course, you know, that's where I come in the picture wow. yes and where are you from originally uh, originally okay I am born and raised in Hong Kong Kowloon and then I Hong Kong yes Hong Kong Kowloon and then wow. I then I moved to UK and I've lived like you know different part of the world but this is where home is I always get a cosmopolitan feeling with you, a cultivated feeling. Oh no, but also down to earth, sense of community, a sense that one can learn about the art from you and with you being in your gallery. Sure, I mean, you know, art is special. You have to have that kind of uh, feeling towards art. I mean, art is not just like, you know, um, color, texture, or style that just goes on a wall to fill up a space. It's not the space in your home, it's a space in your heart. That's what it fills. And um, you can say, you know, yeah, I can fill out uh, art uh, and then it'll look great. But no, it's not just that. You are filling it out with your memories. You know, every art piece has to be a part of a memory. Wow. If it's not part of the memory, it's just nothing. It's just color texture. Well, I want to thank you for personally educating me over the years because sometimes art can be intimidating and unless you have a degree in art studies, you know, a lot of people feel insecure yeah. about their knowledge of art to even have a conversation about art. How can people be empowered to really grapple with the, the work and, and, and express themselves about their feelings about a work of art? Is that, is that something that can be learned? or? I mean, yeah. art is, you have to feel connected to art, you know, yeah. you, I mean, like, I keep going back yeah. to art as uh, not a texture or a color yeah. or a shape yeah. or a size. Right. It's beyond something. Every time you look at art, you have to feel, mm. and it's already there inside you. You have to just, like, oh. make it come alive. And once it comes alive, oh. it starts making sense to you. 
Wow, wow. So in order to like make that sensible, you yeah. have to take a time out and you have to like wow. wait for a few minutes and just look at it and see how it feels. What does it do to you? How it moves you in a oh, way that you wow. want to be moved. Wow. Um, not just look at it visually only. Right, it's right. look at it in a soulful way. Wow. So when you look at art in a soulful way, you will understand mm. what it's doing to you. Mm. The spirituality of art. I mean, of course there is a spirituality yeah, yeah. of art, but it's not just like spirituality in a way that, you know, you look at it and feel like woo-woo. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it is more like alive and awake in a way you want it to be. And it speaks to everybody in a unique and individual oh, way. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Now, John Dewey was a great education philosopher. We talk about him a lot on our show. He once said that the aesthetic is the opposite of the anesthetic. So the anesthetic puts you to sleep. The opposite of that is an encounter with a work of art which Absolutely. wakes you up. Oh yes, yes, okay. that is very powerful. <laughs> aesthetic is the key to life because without aesthetic you can put things in order and it's fine. But you just put it in an aesthetic way and it just becomes powerful. It's magical. Oh, the aesthetics wow. is what is the whole beauty of art is. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like, especially in framing industry, sure. uh, sometimes customer will come in and say, uh, you know, I want like a really big frame to go so that it looks nice and big and bold. But if you have an art piece, it's yeah. which is a miniature, yeah. and you're expecting it to put like a big chunky frame, it's not going to look right wow. because miniature art and a big chunky frame the aesthetics is wrong wow. Wow. but in order to make it big and bolder right. you can do other things that can wow. make it not just frame so aesthetic is wow. powerful you could be teaching at Columbia or Princeton or <laughs> you should be running art departments I would love to actually I do have a mission I feel okay. like especially in Hoboken yes. um, we have a lot of artists yes. we have a lot of people who wants art but there is no connection between people and artists mm. it's mm. the big gap right. because right. artists are not connecting in the way right. they should be connecting with right. people right. and people are not right asking right question right. what do why do I need art Right. and artists are not even able to say why do right. they need art because right. I think um, mm. art has kind of sort of become a little bit commercial oh, yes. it's oh, all yes. about like money I want to oh. pay my bill we are yes. artists so we are strugglers so we you know all those Some ideas. Of these pieces are going for a hundred million dollars Hiba yeah but those pieces were made yeah. at the time when art right. was only source uh -huh. of life oh. right now the source of life is your iPhone right. or your phone you know right. there's other things and right. at the time when those art were created they were just not created for you know they were mission they were they were like part of missions wow. that's why you know I mean they're not going millions of dollars because it was made by Picasso the Picasso is the idea who he was and what he became and what he brought it to the world as the world progressed. Right. Those right. ideas are million dollars, not just his piece only. Uh, so I don't think uh, artists these days are making art just, I mean, of course they are making art, don't take me wrong. They are making art which are meaningful, but they are also artists who are making art which is just, um, mm. just purely for money purely for a wrong reason, a reason to feel like I just want to be famous, but I can only be famous yes. if I sell so-and-so art for right. so-and-so value, which is a wrong reason. I think art has to always make you feel something, and those feelings will not come unless and until you study what the idea is. So it takes the soul out, it takes the soul out. Oh, now we are here on the sidewalk of Hoboken and before we go inside Heba's wonderful gallery, we just want to just reflect on the fact that we are in the beautiful public square. Uh, another one of my heroes um, is Robert Putnam from Harvard University who wrote a book called Bowling Alone, The Collapse and Revival of American Community. And he talks about the importance of conversations on the sidewalk, mm. it, which he, it's a term he invented called social capital. 
He I said like the, the, the mental health of a community depends on not how many friends you have, but how many brief chats you can have on the on the sidewalk with an acquaintance. Absolutely. With an acquaintance. And Hoboken seems to have that. So how has that affected you as we pan around? Claudia, dear, maybe just show a little bit of the sidewalk as we continue the conversation. I want people to know we are in the public square. Most television shows, when you watch them, there's this dark, anonymous studio somewhere where you have no idea what's going on. But Claudia, dear, could you just pan around, sweetie, to show the world? that this is Hoboken, New Jersey. This is one of the top 10 streets in America, and we love the fact that it's walkable. You don't even need a car in Hoboken. Hoboken could be a model green city for the country. Yes. You know, it really could be. So yeah. how has the friendliness of the neighborhood impacted you? I mean, honestly, I we've been here for almost like, since we moved here, like 24 years, and I feel the small, town feel is so unique and so special yeah. it just makes you more connected I mean uh, people will walk in and I will see their little kids yes. growing up and I've known that couple the first time they moved to town and now they're married and you know so we are all connected so right. this sidewalk chat yeah. is very special Extremely valuable, and even though we're right across from New York, and we love New York, and for the culture it has, there is a kind of alienation that Hoboken is, is a corrective to that, that you hear, you feel a sense of connection and interconnection that one doesn't always feel in the big city. It can be a little more isolating. Where, in Hoboken? In New York. In New York? Yeah. Uh, New York is a big uh, place. Yeah. It's it's not only New Yorker, it's yeah. combined of everybody else. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Hoboken, it's the same thing, but it's again, it's like local people who are more uh, yeah. homey, you know? Yeah. And uh, New York. Homey, and cozy, homey. Yeah. And it's a very yeah. touristy town, so yeah. I, I yeah. can't even, like, you know, uh, I don't know much about, I wouldn't want to go there. <laughs> We can visit though, right? We can visit, we can there. visit yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> I can go for the Broadway show, yes. for the food, uh -huh. and for shopping. Yes. But when it comes to home, this is home. We love coming home. Oh, yes. Oh, of course, this is home. So now let us take a nice little stroll into the gallery space. Hi, okay. On okay. Hi. <laughs> oh, I look like at that! that. Huh? Wow. Cool. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Now we're inside the Frame Shop Gallery with Queen Heba, Queen, Queen Heba, sitting on her throne. Yes, I am. Wow, look at that. This is fabulous. Uh, next to these two gorgeous images of New York. We're just talking about New York, and we also happen to have the best view of New York from Hoboken, right? And there is a beauty in the skyline itself. Talk a little bit about these, these works. Actually, this is just a uh, street artist from uh, the city, and it's nothing, uh, nothing special. But the special is the scene itself. You know, it's a very loosey goosey art, uh, and you can find this anywhere in the street. But again, you know, the idea of having street artists and save them from like just keeping as a being as a street artist and you know buying their work it kind of makes it uh, important for us to help these artists so but that particular artist let's take a look over here okay this is a little bit more um, sort of like a horror genre or a kind of a surrealist type of image I uh, I actually uh, feel really funny to talk about this artist because he's not truly an artist okay. but in my mind I always believe that everyone's truly an artist mm. because we have that artists within us right. and we don't bring it out till we are ready to bring it out. So this is uh, just a local uh, Hoboganite and uh, he started painting oh. and this is what he paints. So when yeah. he brings this to uh, stretch and frame, his wife is like, oh my God, oh. he makes dark art. Yeah. And the darkness of it, that's what yes. I felt. Yeah. And I think uh, it's not dark art, like our mind yeah. is a little bit oh different in our way and sometimes we have to paint our darkness the pain to bring out the bright of the life the catharsis experience absolutely oh. so so he's going through a process of like getting everything that is in his 
mind, which is dark, so he can go to the brighter side. Wow. And um, wow. it's a it's a process, and every everybody, every human being should be able to like go through this process of painting out their dark side, so they can go to the path they want to live. Yeah, or like the same thing in a novel or a movie, you know, that shows you a dark side of the human condition. Uh, that then you, it can be like a therapeutic process. There is a linkage between psychology and art. Absolutely, yes. I mean. Yeah. Uh, you have to process through that therapy therapy is i mean you know it's not that you sleep on a couch and you look at your art piece and you feel like you know therapeutic uh therapeutic is a sense that you know like for example you have uh, a piece of art that your mom gave you yes. i mean when you, whenever you look at that art piece you will look at it and say like wow my mom gave me this when she was so and so. So you're living the memory of it. And uh, those uh, memory yeah. can heal you. Uh, Even though we have a problem with yeah. my mom, with our family, right. Right. but you still have that love, that kindness for our parents. And you know, uh, we forget all those things and we say, oh, you know, she was a great woman. She uh, was, she, I remember this part of her. Uh, we don't have to remember all the evil side of everything. We have to remember just the good part that makes us happy. So this is a therapeutic process. Absolutely. Having art is a therapeutic process. Wow. What do I owe you for this hour of therapy? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Oh good, wow. <laughs> away. So we all feel therapeutically, you know, uh, happy about life. I've often thought about that Hebrew, like if more people were empowered to have conversations about art and how it makes them feel and to express that, that we would have a happier society, that the overall happiness level would go up, you know, and I think a lot of times schools don't really teach that well, since, you know, my background is education and they have been giving short shrift to the arts, you know, and the humanities and they're stressing science too much. We think science is important, obviously, in technology, but we just watched a documentary on Channel 13 about education. Education. They didn't mention art once. They did not mention art once. And when they talk about charter schools, corporate charter schools, they never talk about art. And this is so important to our sense of happiness and love and being better people, better citizens. What, what, what do you think about that? I think uh, since a lot of us, we don't understand art, yeah. so we don't know how to give the knowledge of art. So it comes down to the root of like, you know, like we don't know so we can share it. Mm. Like in school itself, like teachers don't know what should they teach. Right. So, I mean, science, they go to the yeah. uh, school and learn about science. So they know how to teach science mm. and art. They're not really learning in a mm. spiritual way. Yeah. They're only learning the um, what do you call it? Like technique of making yeah. art, Correct. Yes. but not the real source of art. What art should be the feelings the part feelings is left art. out yes i mean now uh, i my son who's for 13 yeah. and uh, he loves to paint and oh. he will sit down and he will uh, start sketching things but then when i send him to art school mm -hmm. he didn't like it he didn't like the structure of art. He didn't like the teacher who was teaching him. And he's like, I don't want to let like, go. Right. So sometime exploring art, and it's a parent's duty to let yes. the children explore art right. in the way they want to be understood art. That's why we're trying to do with our TV show to make this like an international curriculum that people can come to our show like a university and there'll be no grades and no tests so you don't have to worry about it. Just inspiration. Just people like yourself that we can inspire others to go for their creative dreams and, and not be afraid to, to put it out there. What, what advice could you give our audience, people watching at home, sitting on the couch, a lot of people get passive watching TV. How can they overcome their resistance and to go like you have done it, you've made it a career in the arts that's amazing you're part of the art world which is a magical place what if other people want to become part of that world what would you say to them you have to start somewhere yeah. you have to start somewhere don't be afraid of trying to understand art mm. and you don't have to like try hard mm. just look at it mm. and just feel it mm. and the rest will come to you oh. it's very natural but allow yourself this natural process wow. to happen to you. That's all I have to say. That's beautiful. Claudia, how are we doing on time, dear? Um, 20 minutes. 
We have 20 minutes. This is the first segment of our show on the uh, magical treasures of Hoboken, the hidden unseen treasures, although Heba is very much seen. She's on the avenue very much, a fixture in the community, on the sidewalk, in dialogue, friendly, says Elodia. Uh, we just love that we're doing this show. We've been meaning to do it for a long time, and we wish you all the best and good luck to your artwork and all your creativity. Thank you. Thank you so much. For our next segment on the community treasures of Hoboken, we have Alex Morales, who has a gallery on First Street, which has always been one of my favorite streets in Hoboken. First Street has a kind of a, a chemistry to it. It has like a bohemian feeling, and Alex brings a multicultural aspect. He is one of the great artists from Uruguay, one of the great representatives of Latin American art here in the United States. He's a painter, he's a sculptor, he's worked in so many different med mediums, and I just want to say as a Hoboken resident I'm so glad that you're in this town because you bring your spirit your flavor your art your culture so welcome to Hoboken how long have you been in Hoboken thank you so much uh, it's a pleasure a real pleasure I am very happy here in Hoboken uh, I love the city it's super cool uh, I live here in Hoboken one year and a half ago when I come in the first time to the city I love the city. I love the people. It's, it's amazing. And later I moved to Woodbridge. Uh, I bought the house and moved. And one year later I take the decision to put the art gallery here. And coming again, I have the gallery now. I am very happy. I opened in six months ago. And everything is beautiful, perfect. Thank you. Well, we think that now today is such a gorgeous day. It's like about 82 degrees. It's a, it's a late spring day in June. Uh, the birds are chirping. There's trees on the block, you know, and and we're so. The, this is a cherry tree. Yeah, cherry. It's tree. beautiful. Beautiful tree. Beautiful yeah. tree. There's, a, there's an old barber shop behind us. You can see. Check out the barber pole, honey. I love I love when I see the barber pole. Makes me feel very happy, like a community. You see the barber, yeah. I know the the barber shop. The every people, the bar too. Oh. Every people know here is fantastic <laughs> people. I love this. They have cafes. Yeah, no, no. The first street is the yeah. best in Hoboken. First street. Yeah, the it's first. It's the street. magic secret of Hoboken. It's, it's the young. A lot of young people coming here. Yes. You know, a lot of move. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. Oh, I am happy. Wonderful. What, what, what inspires you, Alex, for your art? What makes you excited to paint something? What, what is it, what is the inspirational? We want our audience, people watching us, you know? Maybe they have talent, they want to express themselves. How, how is it, how do you do? How does it work for you personally? Uh, my work depends on what I feel. Uh, and every moment I feel different. Uh, Sometimes if I am, um, for example, I. Sorry for my English. That's first. fine. No, that's okay. It's perfect. Uh -huh. I speak Spanish. This is my first language. Um, I try to speak. Um, my Spanish needs to get better too. My wife is from Bogota, Colombia, so I'm always trying to uh, uh, practice with my wife and, and, and get. Uh, and so, mi español es, es más fuerte, more strong, mi fuerte, mi español. Is that? Gracias. Thank you, my friend. Um, Sometimes I work in many different mediums. No? I can draw in watercolor, oil, acrylic, pastel, every technique. I am sculpture too. Uh, depends what I feel. Sometimes I am relaxed, very relaxed. I, I, I feel inspiration to drawing, for example. It's, it's a lot of work, many days, drawing with the ink. Too much detail, and maybe I can work in one week, two week. And if I don't finish my piece, I stop. And I change the technique. I'm going to work in another thing, maybe sculpture or painting. 
at the same time, one week, two weeks, three weeks later, stop and continue with another work, you know? All the time I am change my work. Uh, entonces, this is good for me too for practice, continue practice every technique, you know? I have my style, but I work in many different uh, techniques. For my gallery, it's good too for the people coming uh, looking for uh, commissions. Mm. Yeah, I work in for, for my client, yes. what my client wants. You're living your dream, my friend. You're living your dream. And a lot of people out there yeah. in our society have, have given up their dream. I, as a teacher, I try to tell my students, go for your dream. Go for your biggest dream. And the problem in our society with art now, in terms of education, they, they're taking the arts out of the education, which is wrong, we think. We believe we're using our show to teach. So you're now our teacher. Yeah. You're going to talk to our audience like a classroom, OK? Me and you as a, in a dialogue. People watching us on TV, sitting home on the couch, or maybe watching on their smartphone. You're going to learn from Alex Morales, one of the great Latin American artists of the world, something about his technique, his practice, practice, his inspiration, and some of the themes that, that motivate him. Uh, you think uh, this magic of creativity, how can we bring it to the world more? Sorry, I'm again the question. How, how, can we, how can we make sure that more people can be exposed to art in terms of uh, the politics of the, the world? Like, you think so is a prejudice against art or we need to be more pro-art? How, how can we educate young people to be inspired to go for their dream like you went for your dream? Okay, now Claudia just jumped in there from she just went behind the camera. We shut the camera off and she translated uh, for, for Alex uh, the question. So now he's ready with an answer in terms of inspiration and in the next generation. How can we, you know, how can we unleash creativity in young people? Yes, thank you for helping me. Okay. Um, yeah. I think so get the best or the best more important thing is the, the parents bring the children. Yeah. Very young children, when are three, four, five, six years old, when you go to the galleries, museum, art school, every arts, the children absorb yes. everything. Everything. This is the, the best, more important time when the people is children. Uh, this is the moment. Uh, every people have something inside. Uh, about the art, every people. Some people have a little bit, and other people sa have too much. So, but the best moment is when the people are shown here every week, coming two children, two girls, seven years. I have the drawing inside. When I finish the school, coming every day, I say hello, give me a kiss, sit with me five minutes, ten minutes when I paint him. And uh, later the father, mother coming to bring the children and say hello. This is fantastic. So the, I think okay, this is the best, more important for the, for the arts, no? It's thinking in the, the new generation. I think you're a born teacher, Alex. You should, you should have your own school. This man needs to have his own school. And now we're going to go inside the gallery and discover some of the treasures of Alex Morales, great Uruguayan artist here in Hoboken. We're blessed to have you in Hoboken on First Street. We're going to go inside the gallery and check out some of the work. Of course. Thank you. Come in. Okay. okay. Welcome, welcome to coming inside and enjoy my art. I want to explain a little bit some pieces. 
Now this work here is interesting because the dog, you say, the eyes follow you. Yeah. It's as if when you walk around, the dog's eyes. Wh why did you want? Why? Why to do that? This is the series that I start to work about the homeless who live in New York in the subway. All the time live there inside. Very sad situation. All this. Uh, people is in my mind, no, it's real. So, bro, in my mind, this man live all life inside the train station. Inside, it's part of the, the train station. He don't have eyes, no arm, it's, it's sad, but, but it's real, you know? Mm. And the people is very indifferent. Mm. The people no see, no, yeah. no nothing. Only continue walking and the dog is only the dog know what happened with this man and the dog speak with you with the eyes and when you are here you see the, the painting you see the dog the dog see you all the time if you walking left or right the dog see you he speak with the eyes the dog is trying to communicate maybe like something is wrong here yeah. help this poor man yeah this is the idea wow. this is the idea and this shows you how the art also can give visibility to the invisible and show the light on the problems, the social problems. Yeah, there's this idea. Uh, you know, in another, okay. in another piece. Let's take a look. Yeah. Say, okay. when you see something, say something. Say something, yes. Okay, I say something. Ah, <laughs> that can be interpreted in more than one way. This is another, yes. another um, piece. Uh, the same series, yeah. the homeless. This yeah. is another homeless. This man looks like a drug addict and an uh, and uh -huh. alcohol. Alcohol. Sure. But in this piece, of size, I want to show show the people. Mm. Okay, every every people have uh, two face or yes. Yes. or good and bad. Every people is good and bad ah. inside. Right. And this man. If you see this, okay. if you see the man, it's sad. It's real sad. No, it's bad man. Mm. This is crazy man. For oh. the al for the alcohol, for the drug. You know. Wow. So there's a psychological side to your work. Yeah, the messenger is. You know, the the people feel something. Mm. You know, I don't know why. I think in this, in, in this moment, but I love this piece. It's very hard. This is a work that can start a conversation that people can then start to think about the social problems, have to solve them, right? The, the art can say, you know, don't ignore this, don't ignore this problem. Uh, the, the idea is I have two ways in my art. One way is more inside me, what I feel, what I think in. Well, I want to say something with my art. And in another way, it's a little bit more commercial. Yeah. Uh, painting pieces more beautiful, not too much messenger, yeah. only something beautiful for the people like or not like. You know, uh, two way in the same time. Perfect. It's important also to show the beauty in the world with a more traditional style. And I'm looking at a beautiful painting here. Maybe we can swing the camera around, baby, and see this. This is a beautiful landscape painting. Where, where is this? This looks like it's, is that in South America or is that in Europe? Uh, this piece is not as real. This oh. is in my mind. Rem uh, when I paint in this piece, uh, I remember when I go to fishing in my country. Mm, young, very young. In Uruguay. Uruguay, yeah. Okay. No, it's real, but uh, it's, it's similar. The feeling is the same. This is my country. And talk about Ur Uruguay. Talk about how that influenced your art growing up, your country. Uh, say again, please. Uruguay is the influence. Claudia, maybe you're right here, baby. You can say, translate that. Eh, ¿Cómo le influyó Uruguay para que se convirtiera en artista? Uh, I started to drawing when I had three years old, mm. oh. three, five, four, five, all my life. I started to student uh, when I had 14 mm. years old, and in this moment, I say, this is my life. Mm. I am artist. Mm. For more than 35 years, 
I dedicate my life to the art. I have 48 now. Right. I paint, in drawing, practice, student, experimentation, every day in my life. You're very vibrant, you're very alive, you're very much in the moment, you're very, yes. have a lot of energy, muy energía, right? As I say that right? Mucho energía. Mucho energía, yes. <laughs> is, the, art is, the art is my life. Uh, the art is who I am. We feel the same, me and Claudia, with our show, is like a work of art, and the people that we meet, the conversation. It's very, very good, important, your work. <laughs> the people know best, for example. Thank you so much. He's a good man. We'll be back for part two sometime. But let's just take a look at some of these classic paintings, honey. She could flip the camera this way, and we could look at these beautiful. This is like, who are some of the inspirations for your work? Like Monet, Renoir, uh, Van Gogh? Um, I love many, many, many okay. different artists yeah. in, the, in the history. Uh, I love Caravaggio. Okay. I love uh, Jackson Pollock. Mm -hmm. Completely. Jackson Pollock, completely different. Completely different artists. Yeah. I love Picasso. I love Manet. Mm -hmm. uh, Toulouse Lautrec. Toulouse Lautrec. Uh, I, I love. Uh, uh, I love the surrealismo. Uh, every artist. Uh, we're walking through the gallery. Let's continue to walk as we talk. Okay. I think so. I have. Uh, I am, um, I don't know how do you say in English, but I take the every artist, the every, the every style, I take some, take what inspires something. you? I, I learn something okay. with, about the every artist in my life. Right. E I am, I paint in, this is my work, I am who I am. I don't know, I know I have my style, but I take many things, the every artist in the history. Wonderful. This piece that just catches my eye over that big canvas, look how gorgeous. Let's take a look over. It uh, looks like in the background you have Hoboken there. Uh, it looks like uh, the Lackawanna Terminal in this feast that's before us. Is this an actual place or did you make this up also? Or is it a combination? Uh, this piece is, uh, I painted this piece one year and a half or two years and a half ago. This table is real. Mm. I have this table in my another studio in my house. Mm. I put all this. This is real too. I put all these pieces inside the table in my studio mm. and start to drawing and later take picture of the the fruit. No, no, it's good for a long time in the table. Right. Entonces, <laughs> if I I need two months for painting this piece. This is the first time I draw in the sketch, start to working with the real fruit on the table. Later, the food is bad, I need trash everything, and continue working with the picture. So the location is, in my mind, is inside the house in Hoboken. Mm -hmm. For this right, I paint in Lackawanna. Mm -hmm. And a lot of food. Abundance, abundance is the name, yes. the pieces. And this is another piece, uh, intimate piece. You know, okay, I say, I say something with this. Something about social life, something yeah, about I community, the, the parties. This, yeah, and I think okay, in this moment, uh, the people trash, trash, a lot of food, a lot of food. If you go to the party, when finish the party, a lot of food, trash. And my mind say, why? Mm. A lot of people in this world don't have food. Mm. Why trash the food? And this is, this is the critic. You know, money in the tree, abundance, money, food. But any people go to mm. eat this. Mm. And a few days, mm. garbage. The people trash. Only the bear. Mm. And this coming to eat. The cockroach. It's, it's more symbolic, no? It's, it's one yeah. critic mm. to say, hey, people, not trash the food. Mm. You know? And Hoboken yes. is perfect for those pieces. So we only have a few minutes left. We just want to take a look at some of the pieces here and talk a little bit, not too much, but just to talk a little bit to show some of the beauty of, of your work. This is, these are Hoboken scenes. We could see a classic Hoboken 
watercolors. Look at that beautiful home. That's what you see, folks. When you walk around Hoboken, you see it's like going back in time. You go back to the 19th century, and then you walk to the waterfront. And this is taken up by Stevens Tech, and it shows an extraordinary view. Uh, then when we go this way, we see this beautiful scene, kind of a rustic scene somewhere up in the country. This is another technique. This is pastel crayon uh -huh. with my hand. Uh, drawing with my hand, um, yes, in my mind. Uh, another, another, I want to be there. I know another piece to my mind. I, I don't have um, yeah. picture, nothing. Uh, only my mind. I start to drawing oh. and finish in the same day. Yes. Yes. And just up here, above the door frame. Look at the those 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 uh, series of, of photo of uh, work there. If you want, I yeah. can remove this and show you. You see? Uh, look at that. It's one. Okay. But you can <laughs> move. Move it around. Woo! And every combination. Uh-huh. Every combination is good. All the time is one landscape. Uh -huh. That's the, the point. This teaches me that art can help you change reality or the nature of reality, that the imagination opens up a space to play with different possibilities of how things could be in the world. Oh, also, I realize you are also involved in television. Talk a little bit. You are involved in a television show. Yeah, um, I participated in one show. In Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. And I in 2009. Wow. Yeah, uh, I have the videos and the um, presentation in my website, www.himorales.com. You can go to see the videos. Future TV star, TV star right here. Yeah. It'll be famous. But <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this well, is the idea in the future, yeah, maybe. Yeah, why not? Um, You're a very handsome man, you know. You're you. good for television. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. The, the um, film is fantastic experience. Mm. Uh, I live in Miami for one year. Wow. Uh, the film um, for seven months, living in the Eden Road Renaissance Hotel mm -hmm. in Miami Beach, mm -hmm. and incredible time. Wow. I, I learned a lot, a lot, learned many things. Wow. Uh, 12 different artists, 12 mm -hmm. different countries, mm -hmm. 12 different styles. Um, looking for the best artists. It was fantastic, yeah. Well, you should win first prize on that. Uh, Alex, it's been a pleasure spending time with you today in your gallery, engaging in dialogue and Thanks showing so your much. work and learning something about your, your craft and your practice. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Well, for the final segment of our Community Treasures in Hoboken series, we are so delighted to have with us the great Isabella, who is a wonderful opera singer and is now gracing us with her presence in Hoboken on Grand, just off of First Street, all right, with this Green Pear Cafe, a great place of community. Uh, sit down, have a cup of coffee, talk to your neighbors, make a new friend. We're underneath a pear tree. So that's what this is here, a pear tree. It's called the Green Pear Cafe. And we are with Isabella, who combines so many talents. She's, she's musical. She's a, she's a wonderful person. She's a social person. She's a mother, a, a mother <laughs> as well, right, great mother. She responded to my letter to the editor five years ago when I wrote a letter to the Hoboken Reporter calling for a free ferry service. Well, I got a lot of flack from conservatives who said, what is that? You know, you're giving away money, the nanny state. And I got one positive response from Isabella. She said, yes, they do it in Europe, they should do it here. So she brings her European aesthetic, her European progressivism to Hoboken. We're so delighted that you're here with us, Isabella. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about your, your cafe. Well, I retired from opera three years ago after Sandy, and uh, my husband works for Lavazza Coffee Company. Mm -hmm. So we decided to have coffee here on, on Grand Street mm -hmm. to offer to, to this wonderful community, and that's how we opened two years ago. I love your accent. Thank you so much. 
brings a cultivated flavor of, of European culture. Thank you, thank you. Where are you from originally? Ex Yugoslavia, being uh, half Hungarian, half Serbian from there. Half Hungarian, no wonder I like you. I'm also one third Hungarian. Wow. I didn't know that. And you invited me and Claudia to the Bohemian Hall on the Upper East Side, one of your final performances that time before you went to Europe? Yes, that was a few years ago. Yeah. You remember better. <laughs> yes. No, that was a great treat for me and Claudia. Thank you. Get us out of Hoboken, you know? Right. Thank you so much. Even though we love Hoboken. So now, what is what is next for us? Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about that. We are having a block party this oh. coming Saturday from 3 to 8. Mm. We are going to have a, a little concert by uh, Blutner School of Music. There's a music school across the street. Claudia, maybe just take a look at the music school over there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you have music and cafe right across from each other. Okay. Yes, so there will be a little uh, presentation by their uh, students. And then we are going to have a wonderful band from 5 to 8. Uh, mm. K.J. Denhart is going to perform. And then we are going to have a little demonstration from uh, Edge Gym. They are going to do a little demo on self-defense for women. Oh, that's so important, yeah. I yeah. think it's a, it's a great idea that they are going to do that class. Hello. And uh, just said hello to a, a neighbor walking by, or, or a stranger. Neighbor or stranger? Oh, he's a neighbor. Okay. It's okay to say hello to strangers, too. Yes. We, we try to educate America about that, because we're, there's a lot of alienation in our society, and people turning away from strangers. Oh, sure, there's a lot of alienation. And uh, so we think it's good to say hello to strangers, too. So that was the idea uh, two, three years ago to to open a, a neighborhood cafe and I have to say that I love my job. I really love love my clients, love how this this place evolved into a, a community place gathering spot. Mm. And what we are trying to do here is to slow down a little bit the American pace, to bring mm. that European laid back <laughs> atmosphere. So if you're in a rush, please don't come. Don't come if you're in a rush, please, please go to some of those other cafes that you know that yes. no. So we are trying to, to offer fresh food, freshly made uh, products on the spot. Nothing is pre-made. So yes, you listen to, to good music, you, you meet other clients, other neighbors, and that's the idea that, that we want to bring to this summer solstice uh, party. Bring some board games, meet your neighborhood, your neighbors, and just uh, yes, make a, a stronger community. Now, time is precious. We want this to be a beginning of our relationship with you in television. We want you to come back. We want to do more dialogue with you. There's only This is the Community Treasures in Hoboken. It's an hour-long program, and we're so glad we're concluding it with you here. Because, so again, it brings a European intellectual, also, the European intellectual qualities that we want to promote in our, in our show. And American intellectual, but but it's the back and forth. It's the learning from Europe with Europe, back and forth. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are. Where were you educated? Talk a little bit about your interests. You know, cultural interests. Okay, so I I studied in Budapest. Uh, I did my uh, bachelor's degree there in voice in singing, and then I came over 20 years ago, and I graduated in Brooklyn College. Brooklyn College graduate, all right. Yes, City, yeah. City University cool. of New York. And then, um, yeah, I won some competitions. I did um, mm. a little bit of start of my operatic career here. And then uh, I went to, to Europe. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Another yeah. client passing. Okay, okay. So, uh, why aren't you at the Met? That's why I want to know. Why are you, are you not at the Met? Why am I not at the Met? I was not patient and I didn't wait for that moment. I want I, I won two times the Met competition, yes, yes. so that's, that's good enough for me. I want you to show, to Claudia, show the stars on that tree. I want you to show the star. That's, you are the star, my dear. You should be the star at the Met. But we are, you're, you're the star of Grand Street. The star of Grand Street. Here we go. We are all stars. All stars. Yeah. Maybe we could do a little song. We could go out with a little something or a little Frank Sinatra, maybe. On Saturday, maybe. On Saturday, yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah, Sinatra was born like right around the corner. Music, Hoboken, Sinatra. Yes, yes indeed. Well, it's uh, anything you would like to say. And I think we touched almost. Did I render you speechless? 
Speechless, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. Oh. But please maybe come. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned Frank Sinatra. Maybe, maybe that killed the conversation. Okay. I love okay. Frank Sinatra, of course. <laughs> Yes. So please come and, and join us and, and you know relax and, and just meet mm -hmm. who you didn't meet so far. So do you sing to the customers? Do you serenade? Never. No, no, not yet. No. No, through my uh, no. dishes. Yes. Through the dishes. When you do the dishes, you sing. No, through the making of the wonderful oh, the omelets. Dishes. So it's so it's the kind of a mu it's the music of 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 of, uh, of cooking of, of the creativity in general. So, so we could go deeper into that next time about how the creative process works, whether it's cooking, whether it's music, exactly. or whether it's conversation. Exactly. Or writing. Writing. Thank you. Thank yes. you. You responded to my letter to the editor of the Hoboken Reporter. So and that's a nice circle to close. We have Yay. a circle here under the pear tree, under the pear tree on First and Grand with Isabella. Thank you, John. Bringing her magic to our town. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Claudia. So I hope you enjoyed this, our first of a new series, um, Community Treasures in Hoboken. Uh, already we have ideas for future segments, and uh, if you could think of any, please send to us, Claudia and I, my darling wife Claudia Canasto, filming me right now uh, as I stand on the Hoboken waterfront in Hoboken, New Jersey, a mile square city that's very walkable, that's very friendly, and we tried to, in this particular episode, bring out why uh, you know, why community life is so important, uh, why encountering neighbors and friends and strangers uh, is so important and, and creating a sense of connection and overcoming the alienation which is so endemic in our in our culture which many social scientists have talked about, people like Eric Fromm, uh, people like uh, David Reisman with The Lonely Crowd in 1950, um, people like Robert Putnam and his wonderful book Bowling Alone, The Collapse and Revival of American Community. Um, we think that for a democracy to survive that the citizens need to be talking to each other and you know it's also very pleasant and it's very pleasurable to be able to walk through your community and see people and have little conversations here and there to learn about the treasures of your community um, to bring more art and culture to the communities across America to have uh, small businesses which are the bedrock of a community to have them thriving uh, we hope that the situation with rents <coughs> can get under control this is obviously a political issue as well uh, we think that rents should be kept reasonable um, currently in a documentary film called the lost village about Greenwich Village and which is right across the river you see behind us we have uh, this incredible skyline which we enjoy in Hoboken uh, one of the great benefits of living in Hoboken is we get to see this incredible view. Um, and um, so this movie that I'm in, documentary film, and I want to talk too much about it, but I will just say that it does bring out the issue of why rents have got to be kept affordable for people, for people like Heba, for people like uh, Alex Morales, okay, for, uh, for Isabella to have their wonderful establishments thriving and flourishing, places where citizens can interact with each other. They say the difference between Wall Street and Main Street is that Wall Street is hierarchy, ladders. Uh, Main Street is community, circles, connection. Hi, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Uh, let's have a chat. Let's have a conversation. We are trying to promote the long lost art of conversation on our TV show the Public Voice Salon, which my darling wife and I have been producing, co-producing now for seven years, seven years, and we like to make many, many more episodes because we think that the mainstream media is completely not covering this issue. It's as if it doesn't exist. Uh, sense of community, what's that? 
what does that mean? You know, uh, you would have to study this uh, with a good sociologist. Oh, what's going on? It's, it's, oh, oh, did I say something wrong? What, no. <laughs> All right, we got the army. Hello. Um, always something going on on the waterfront of Hoboken. Um, and uh, so we think that this reality of human conviviality is important. Um, it would help if we had a shorter work week, you know, if people didn't have to be so tired and exhausted when they come home from their jobs and uh, feel as if uh, they have very little time to be with their families, very little time to be in community. When I ran for president in 2012, I was calling for a 25-hour work week, and I'm sure you didn't. S none of the other candidates said anything about work week. I think that's a big issue in the future. Shorter work week. You heard it here first on the Public Voice Salon. Thank Thank you to my darling wife, Claudia Canasto Chabuki, who is from a little town outside of Bogota, a magical town. Uh, and the two of us, husband and wife, are making our shows uh, for you. And we, we want you to be in a dialogue with us, so please send us an email. Tell us what you think about the show. Give us ideas for future episodes. Uh, if you want to be a guest, let us know. We're at info at publicvoicesalon.com. Info at publicvoicesalon.com and uh, thank you very much for watching and, and enjoy your community wherever it is, whether it's Hoboken, whether it's wherever it is and try to build it up, try to grow it, try to enhance it and be a, a positive force uh, for good in the world. So thank you so much. I'm John Braden. I'm an educator and a writer and the host of the Public Voice Salon. Thank you so much.